Hi everyone, it's Wade. I'm working with Functionland team to create a video for installing the RK1 firmware. We're going to start off with the link that I have up here. I've highlighted it for you. The purpose of that is so that you have a written down walkthrough. It will be easier uh, for those who like to go through the walkthroughs to work your way through and read through it. it. may even help with my tutorial to read through it once and see how that goes for you. Now we're going to move on to the next part. Uh, the next part involves the USB drive. Please make sure you have a minimum sized 4 gig USB drive before starting this. When you unzip the zip file of the update, you will end up using almost a full 4 gig, so maybe even get something about 6 gig or more. Thumb drives are relatively cheap these days, so that shouldn't be an issue. If your thumb drive is new or you are unsure of the format on it, it is best to format the thumb drive before you start. You can do that in Windows by opening your Explorer finding your thumb drive as one of the drives in there. Then you just need to right click on it and go to format. Once the format page opens, you wanna make sure it's set to FAT32. It is normally the default, but just in case it is not, make sure it is set there. There's no, lead, no need for a volume label and you can leave it on quick format, then just hit start. The whole process will take a couple minutes with the quick format option selected and you will have a freshly empty and formatted thumb drive. FAT32 is what is needed to install the firmware. Please make sure you have the FAT32 version uh, format installed on it. Next, uh, mine's already formatted in that so I'm just going to close that out. Then we're going to go over to the website where we can download the firmware from. I chose this website to start as a start page uh, for the simple reason that it is easy to remember. The github.com forward slash function land. Does it get much simpler than that? We've all used GitHub before. Function land's the name of the project. It's an easy starting place to remember if you don't have it favorited or don't know where to find the link at. Going down on the page, you'll notice that right here, I'm going to try and highlight that for you, the RK1 image. That's the link you want to click on. Just click on it once. It'll load the uh, next page for you where you want to go down and find the latest release link. If you click that, it will take you to the page of the latest published release. Could be 1.54.6, could be 0 0.7, 0 0.8, could be 1.55. It depends on how many firmware versions we go through. But you always want to do the latest one because it'll have the most updated fixes so you run into less problems. When you're going through, um, once you make it to this page, you'll find four sets of files to download. You do not need to download them all. In fact, we recommend you only download the minimal update zip. The other ones are not really useful for the uh, nodes. We want to just stick with the minimal update. It helps keep everybody in the same thing. So you download the minimal update by uh, just clicking on the link there. And then you'll notice that your download page opens up in the upper right hand corner. It downloads pretty quick, so you won't have to wait too long for this. When it is done, you want to open the file folder where it is downloaded to, and you do that just by clicking on that little folder. Now, you'll notice mine has in parentheses a 1 because I had done this a couple times before. Essentially, um, all that means is that it's downloaded a duplicate copy. Okay, that's fine. The key here, though, uh, that a lot of people are making mistakes on is they are trying to unzip it directly to the thumb drive. Please do not do that. Many times, and this is a glitch in Windows, when you unzip to a thumb drive, 
it corrupts files. So what you want to do is you want to unzip it to a folder. It can be a folder anywhere on your system. And then we will copy the files from that folder over to the thumb drive. To unzip it, you right click on the folder uh, on the file that you just downloaded. You go to Extract All. Windows has a built-in unzipper. You don't have to download any special software. You can either just unzip to the default location or you can browse. I personally have put a folder on my desktop called RK1. So I will select that and I will click Select Folder. Okay, and you can see it changed the path there to the RK1 on the desktop. Now we're going to go ahead and just click Extract here and leave the box checked that says Show Me the Extract Extracted Files When Completed. We'll do that. For mine, again, I have done this before, so the files are already there. I will just hit Replace the Files in Destination. For you, that may not even pop up as if this is your first time doing it. So the uh, process will just continue on for you. I'll hit the replace. We'll wait just a minute here while that unzips. This will take a minute. During this minute while it's unzipping, I'd like to say thank you to all the backers. This project would not be going anywhere without you guys all backing us. And the feedback that you give us, the complete, you know, family-like atmosphere that we have now, it's getting better. Uh, we're working through it, and all of your feedback is appreciated. The problems you bring to the table are problems we solve before mainnet. So if you run into a problem for any reason, please let one of us know, and we'll make sure it gets taken care of. Might take us a day or two, but we're there for you. You believed in us and you decided to back us up and that means everything thank you so much for being a part of this project okay as you can see the unzip has happened and we now are looking directly at the files that it unzipped the easiest way to do this at this point is to leave this window open if you link it to one side and then you open your Explorer on the other side. You can then open your USB drive and then you just highlight all of the files uh, from your unzipped area and you drag and drop them over onto the thumb drive root. Please, another problem that we're noticing is some people are just dragging the folder over and not all the files. It has to be just the files on the root. This way that blocks will be able to see the files, read the files, and boot to the files. Okay? Now, again, because I've already done this, it would be copying over them. I'm not going to hit replace because copying these will take a lot longer. We're just going to hit skip these files for me. For you, it would start a load bar, and you would have to watch it for a little while. That said, once the files are moved over, uh, you can close out of the windows that we have open, and we are ready to take that thumb drive out of the computer and move it over to our FX Blocks unit. The next part of this video will show you what we do over there. That will have to be filmed on my phone, and we will we will do that right now and show you how to finish installing the firmware. Okay everybody, I'm back and now we're on the phone. I just want to show you the cable that I purchased. You can get these on Amazon. Uh, it will convert a USB-C to a USB-A 3.0, which will be the quickest transporting that you can get. It's very, uh, very effective. It has a nice length so you're not hanging out and putting stress on the port in the FX blocks, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my thumb drive that we just put those files on in the other video, and you just connect it into the USB-A. 
and then you go ahead and you plug that into your top port here, okay? Now, when you do this, it'll go right in the middle, it'll slide right in, and you'll feel it actually get snug in there when you, when you hit the port, okay? So, it is in, it is connected, and my little USB port, excuse the teddy bear there, that was a gift, but you'll see the, that the USB is lit up. You can see the little red light in there glowing, okay? Now what you wanna do is you wanna power down your uh, blocks. You wanna unplug it, wait a few seconds, and then plug it back in. Sorry, I don't have a really good camera setup, so I kinda gotta use my hands while holding the camera at the same time, so. Okay, once that's in there nice and snug, You'll see the green light come on. It'll flash to a couple colors before it hits yellow. And then once it hits yellow, there we are. It's kind of a yellow green, but it's uh, I call it yellow. Um, once you hit that point, uh, it's really just a waiting game. Okay, now uh, for the purposes of showing you the LEDs and the, I'll talk you through them, I am going to let this go for a few minutes and instead of pausing it because um, I want to be clear on what you should do and when you should do it. Um, there seems to be a lot of confusion on, uh, you know, people thinking they're done with setup or that something's wrong when certain LEDs come up, and we'd really like to avoid that. Um, so what we're going to do is just sit here and watch this, and as, as the lights change, I'll, I'll talk to you about what's going on. Okay? So... There is, um, you know, the the yellow is the most important. That that just means that we're starting the, that it definitely is booting to the USB stick and we're starting the firmware upgrade. So as it's going through that, um, something you can do while you're waiting, uh, if you haven't already, you can either uninstall the FX Blocks app and reinstall it to make sure all the data is clear. Or if you're a little more tech savvy, you could just go into um, the Android settings uh, for the app and you can delete uh, the storage in there and that will wipe the app because you're gonna need a clean verse, a clean app to uh, get that going, okay? Hang on one second. Okay, so still working on that yellow LED this, this could take a few minutes guys you got to be patient with this one thing you'll notice while ever this is updating you will see, you will hear the fan get a little louder that's normal it's cooling it's doing what it's supposed to sounds a bit louder nothing to worry about Okay, you'll notice it turned blue, and now it's going to green, blue, and green. This is what you want. It stays on the yellow until it gets to the blue-green. The blue-green is just uh, a signal to you. When it starts steadily flashing the blue and green, it means that it is ready for you to disconnect the USB drive. Now, I recommend unplugging it from the wall uh, or from the... Not necessarily from the wall, but uh, unplugging the power to it before removing it because you do have to reboot it that way uh, in any case. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to pull a plug here. Okay. And then you will see that we just pull this back out. Okay. Now that that's out, we plug it back in. And you will see the green come back up. When the green comes up, that just means the start of the boot process has begun and the remainder of the um, upgrade is beginning, okay? It's now uh, already downloaded the files it needs off the thumb drive and we just have to wait for it to go through, okay? Now what we want to look for in this is at the very end of this process, 
just like it was flashing blue and green, you're going to see it flashing the cyan, cyan, which is just another word for the blue. But the flashing cyan lights will uh, signify to you that you are ready for app setup. There are some other colors that are going to flash here. Um, sometimes it's uh, a red for a bit. Um, some uh, other colors will go through, like right now we're pretty much on a white. Uh, so most of these are insignificant to anything you need to know other than watching for the blue cyan. Now what I'm going to do so you're not sitting here watching uh, an hour video on uh, just stuff going through, and it won't take an hour, but a little exaggeration there. But uh, I'm going to pause this video, and then whenever it is flashing uh, the blue cyan, I will pause it. Just know that any colors in between that you see at this point are irrelevant to anything you need to know. It is just waiting for the flashing blue cyan that matters. So we're going to go ahead and pause it now, and we'll get back to you here shortly. Hey guys, I'm back. I noticed that this is the part where the LEDs actually turn off for a little bit. It can be a little concerning for some people when they are doing this because they think it's done, they think it's locked up, they think there's a problem. They there is no problem when it's shut off. It's just, it's doing other tasks, and right now there's no LED to tell you something's going on. But if you wait, and we'll wait a minute here because it shouldn't be too long, all of a sudden you're going to see that the LEDs come back on without me doing a single thing to the system. This is a common point where people think something is wrong with their system. And they either unplug it or replug it in, and then that causes glitching later on and stuff. So please, please be patient when this stuff's going on. Um, if it's not flashing uh, the cyan, then it's not ready for you to do anything to it. Okay. Now, I mean, I'm sure there are exceptions. There's exceptions to every rule. If it's 24 hours later and you're still not seeing anything, there's probably a problem. But uh, you know, for most cases, you, you got to be patient. It can take a little while for everything to just sync up and go into place where it needs to be for this to operate. So, uh, just to give you an idea of how long, as soon as this turned off, I decided to start the video again. Just as a reminder to everybody, please be patient. So, when the LEDs turn back on, see, there we go. We had that red flash. Now we got green. So, we're going to hold on. If the color looks a little off on my, on my phone, I apologize. Uh, my room is not well lit right now, so coloring might look a little off. And see, we shut off again there. That is, again, nothing to be concerned about. This is just basically signals that the blocks is updating the firmware and it's going from section to section and doing different things. So, you know, oh, there's our red again. Again, nothing, uh, and, and red's another one. People see red and they panic because typically red is signal <laughs> In most uh, electronic devices, signals that something's wrong. Uh, it does not mean something's wrong in this case, so uh, do not panic over that. And if you notice, we're at the coveted blinking cyan. Okay, so now we're ready to go and uh, set up our app. 